During the interview process, many employers ask candidates to complete an assessment test before advancing to the next stage. These tests are designed to measure skills that are essential for candidate success on the job. An example of such an assessment is a mechanical aptitude test. Employers use mechanical aptitude tests to evaluate practical understanding of mechanical concepts, spatial reasoning, basic physics, and the ability to work with tools, systems, or machinery in the real-world settings. Let me show you examples from these tests that will help you prepare, pass, and get hired. Coming up on online training for everyone. hill will give the cyclist the highest speed at the bottom, assuming no friction and no air resistance. A cyclist's final speed depends on the vertical height descended, not the steepness of the hill. A long, gentle hill allows the cyclist to accelerate gradually and continuously without interruption. This smooth descent leads to the highest speed at the bottom when friction and air resistance are ignored. The correct answer here is choice B. Why does a longer, shallower ramp makes it easier to lift a heavy object to the same height? Here's the riddle of physics in everyday life. Push a box up a steel ramp and it feels like a workout. But stretch that ramp out, make it longer and shallower, and suddenly it's easier. Why? Because while the height is the same, you are spreading the work over a long distance. This reduces the force you need to apply it at any moment. The total work doesn't change, but the ramp gives you mechanical leverage. The correct answer here is choice C. There are four candles of the same size, and each has an automatic fire extinguisher that moves toward the flame at the same constant speed. Which candle will be extinguished first? Look at the distance between each extinguisher and its flame. Which one has the shortest path? Do you see it? The correct answer here is choice D. What happens to the water level when a floating ice cube melts in a glass of water? Have you ever wondered why your glass doesn't overflow when ice melts? Let's break it down. When ice floats, it pushes water out of the way. Just enough to match the weight, but not the volume. That's the key. Ice takes up exactly the space it had originally displaced. So the final answer is choice A. A light ray traveling through air strikes a smooth water surface at a 45 degree angle to the surface. What happens to the ray as it enters the water? When a light ray moves from a less dense medium, which is air, to a denser medium, which is water, its speed decreases, causing it to bend toward the normal, an imaginary line perpendicular to the surface of the point of contact. And the correct answer here is choice B. You've got eight identical looking balls, but one is slightly heavier. And you only have two chances with the balance scale to find the heavier ball. What do you do? Let's start by weighting three balls versus three balls. If they're equal, the heavy one will be in the remaining two. If one side is heavier, great. Now just weigh two balls from that group. The result will lead you straight to the odd one out. And the correct answer here is choice C. Two identical blocks start from a height of one yard at the same time. Block one drops vertically. Block B slides down a frictionless 30 degree ramp. With no air resistance, which hits the ground first? Let's break it down. Both blocks start at the same height and are only affected by gravity. Since they fall the same vertical distance and gravity is constant, they take the same amount of time to reach the bottom. What's important here is that the ramp alters the path of one block, but because it's frictionless and there is no air resistance, it doesn't affect the time for the vertical descent. And the correct answer here is choice C. Here's the cool question for you. Which of the following movement sequences will return a shape to its original orientation? Did you get to the right answer? Reflecting a shape twice over the same line cancels the transformation. In fact, it's the only option that's put the shape right back where it began. 
perfectly aligned. The correct answer here is choose B, reflect twice over the same line. A sheet of paper is folded in half three times, then one hole is punched through all the layers. How many holes will appear when it's fully unfolded? Each fold doubles the layer. Picture the folds. 1 becomes 2 after the first fold. 2 becomes 4. Can you guess what 4 becomes? Now imagine hole punching through every layer. One punch equals 8 visible holes when unfolded. And the correct answer is choose D, 8. Four identical vessels, each containing a different amount of liquid, are all heated to the same temperature. In which vessel will the liquid cool the fastest? To answer this question, apply the principle of heat loss per unit volume. Liquids with less volume cool faster because they have less thermal mass and greater surface-to-area volume ratio. Since vessel D has the least amount of liquid, it will lose heat the fastest, making it cool down the quickest. So the correct answer here is choice D. You throw four identical balls with the same speed but at the different angles. Which ball will travel the farthest horizontally? Let's break it down. 30 degrees stays low. It's fast but shallow. 60 degree goes high but falls back quickly. 90 degree just goes up and drops. So the correct answer here is choose B, 45 degrees. It balances height and distance, given the longest flight across the field. Which container, always the same total volume, will overflow the fastest if water is poured into each one at the same rate? Take a close look at all the containers. In three of them, water will fill gradually. But in one container, the hole causes it to leak halfway through the fill, making it the first one to overflow in function, not in the form. So the correct answer here is choice C, a container with the hole halfway up the side. Take a close look at these three connected gears. If the bottom left gear, the largest one, rotates clockwise, what is the direction of the top gear, the smallest one? Each gear flips the motion of the one before it. So, clockwise, counterclockwise, and clockwise again. The correct answer is choice A, clockwise. Are you ready for a brain hack? Remember, practicing often can make you smarter and sharper. Let's dive in into this question to supercharge your mechanical aptitude skills. Two kids are playing on the seesaw. One child weights twice as much as the other. The heavier child sits closer to the center. If the heavier child sits 70 inches from the center, how far should the lighter child sit to make the seesaw balanced? Your choices for the answers are Choice A, 35 inches Choice B, 70 inches Choice C, 140 inches And choice D, as close as possible Remember, we're enhancing your skills here to make you smarter So you need to solve this question yourself And just like on the real test, I'll set a timer for you to solve this Make sure to lock in your answer before timer's up Let's begin Time's up! Have you locked in your answer? Now let's go through the solution together, and you will be amazed how simple it is to solve it. When two children sit on the seesaw, weight is applied on the both sides. A seesaw balances when the weight and the distance on both sides create equal force, called torque. Since the heavy child weights twice as much, the lighter child must sit twice as far to balance the seesaw, keeping the torque equal on both sides. Since the heavier child sits 70 inches from the center, it means that the lighter child should sit 140 inches away to balance the seesaw. And the correct answer here is choice C, 140 inches. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and to pass any test. If the content of this video was helpful, please make sure to click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this. And when you tell us, 
we will deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description and comments of this video. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials related to this topic. I really appreciate your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.